Hi, I'm Marla Niederer from Morsini's Angels and today I'd like to share a little bit of an experiment with graphite and watercolors with you today. Um, what I wanted to share is that I had just completed this graphite sketch and it was inspired by uh, Julia Margaret Cameron um, and this is a photograph that she took during the Victorian period and it's called I Wait and her photographs are very beautiful and I really was drawn to this one and I wanted to use it as an inspiration and since it's in the public domain I was able to do so um, but what I wanted to, so this doesn't look exactly like it, but that's okay because this is kind of more what I wanted. Um, but what I wanted to share was that um, I like to add a little bit of color of wa with watercolors to my graphite. But I have been experiencing some difficulties with that. So I'm really, really pleased with this sketch. But... I feel like when I add the watercolors, like this is a different sketch that I did, and I added watercolors and I feel like the watercolors were just too heavy and took away from the actual graphite sketch. So if you want to do just a completely watercolor painting, that's fine, but I guess since I did all of the work for the graphite. I felt like once I added the watercolor to this, I really lost what I really found pleasing in the graphite sketch. So um, I looked it up and I kind of looked up, you know, ideas on how to use watercolors with graphite. And I came up with a tutorial by Steve Mitchell and he has a YouTube channel, The Mind of Watercolor. And he did a portrait sketch. And then he added watercolors to it. And one of the things that he said just really struck me was he's like, less is more. Now, I've heard that before talking about art. And sometimes it's really hard to stop and to know when to stop when you're working with a medium. So um, what I wanted to do today and share with you is an experimental process of doing that with graphite and watercolors. So instead of um, actually, my thoughts are actually instead of destroying this or making it less than less pleasing than what I feel it is at this point in time, I'm going to go through the whole process. I'm going to do another sketch with you um, online, and then I'm going to experiment with adding the watercolors to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, do pretty similar of the same sketch using um, this photograph from Julia Margaret Cameron in the public domain and I found it on Wikipedia um, using this as my inspiration for this practice piece too. Now with this practice piece I did tape down to a hard board um, some watercolor paper and it's hot press. And hot press is the kind of watercolor paper that's very smooth and it doesn't have much texture to it at all. And I find I like that when I do ink and watercolors and pencil and watercolors because it's smooth, it gives you a nice surface. It's not the kind of paper I would use if I was doing multiple layers of watercolor and washes and things like that. It's more when you're just adding a little bit of watercolor um, to the paper. So um, that said, this particular one is Fabriano. And as you can see, I taped it down with masking tape. This is artist masking tape. 
and I find that that'll keep it from buckling so and once I add the water medium so I before too much more um, beveling on I'm going to start out now what I'm using is a this is a very fine mechanical pencil and it uses a 0.3 lead and it's graphite and then I usually have um, nearby um, erasers and then um, these are you know basically blenders that I use and these you can pick up anywhere I tend to buy a lot of my stuff from Dick Blick but you can pick them up in Michaels or online um, in other places and then I had this um, other pencil a mechanical pencil and this has a thicker lead um, I'm not exactly sure what kind of lead. I think it's like a 0 0.7 millimeter lead. Um, but, you know, you can use whatever sketching pencils that you have. And, um, you know, whatever's handy, use it. But I do like, you know, starting out with the um, very light uh, pencil and then going and adding darker. And anyway, so before I do much more, I am going to start. So what I started out with when I do this is um, I try to figure out where everything's going to be placed within the frame of the paper. So I kind of wanted it centered because this is going to the focal piece that I'm doing. and the the main thing that I'm looking for is the face of the angel and um, and I want to get in her hair and I want to get in her wings and I don't want to run out of space so I'm going to start out with kind of the shape of her hair and um, you know I'm not doing too much measuring right now and I know I can erase it and then um, this is kind of where I'm going to have her arms and then I kind of want her her wings you know in this area so this is very rough so now what I'm going to do is um, her, her forehead is quite high and she has a very um, and I can change this as I'm going but she has a very wide face and her features are very low on her face because she's a child so the the lower the eyes you would get more of a childlike face than you would um, for an adult so what I typically do this is a flat um, facing um, face so um, what I do is I you know divide it in the center and you know these are my reference lines that I use and then what I do is um, since her eyes are quite low uh, they're almost in the center so I'll put a, an eye line there and then her nose so I'll put another line here and again um, I say this a lot um, I'm not going for perfection I'm going for pleasing so it doesn't have to be perfect it doesn't have to look exactly like the photo it's basically this is giving me um, an inspiration to create so um, I am just going to keep sketching and basically her eyes are quite wide apart so I'm going to put a line going down and another line going down and well this one is a little 
they say. So a lot of times I will actually use a um, ruler. Um, a lot of times it's a sewing gauge, but I will be right back. Okay, so I have my sewing gauge and I use this a lot when I'm sketching and I do like to measure. Um, I have difficulty just eyeballing things and this really helps me down the road. So here, you know, the distance from the nose to the side, um, I will measure it and I'm finding that I put the wrong distance for this line. So I'm going to put a line here. And I'm using the wrong pencil, so I'm going to put that one away for now. And um, then I'm looking at from here to the... And I'm almost thinking this should be wider here. So I'm going to put a little mark here and fix the shape of the face. And this is good. So. I will erase that line so I don't get mixed up. And then I will add to the face here. And this is just the beginning, so you know you can erase things as we go along. And so this is kind of the center of the eye. So her eyes are kind of small in my opinion. So I'm going to, I mean a lot of times like if you were to, let's see, you're going to take it and actually measure on the photo. It's kind of the same distance and this is very typical from the, you know, the center point of the eye to the nose. So it's kind of like three, three distances across. So if we were going to do, let's see. So this would be the inner and the outer corner of the eye. So that's a good start. And I usually like to start out with the eyes um, because they are quite important. So I'm going to erase this right now because that's just going to be really distracting when I'm doing the eye. And I'm going to start out with the pupil of the eyes. So, or the iris, sorry. And I try to do both at the same time. because it's easier to get closer to symmetrical when you start out um, doing everything, kind of going from side to side at the same time. So this is not really centered the same way because I'm noticing like in the picture her eye is closer to the inner corner on that eye than that. She almost got a little bit of um, the beginning of a little bit of a cross eye. But it kind of gives her a nice look. Anyway, so I'm going to start out with after I kind of get the Placement. And I'm just looking 
to measure roughly the distance. Okay, and I think where I'm doing it a little different, because it looks a little different, is the shape. So I do use, um, this is a Tombow eraser. And I find for small little spots, it's, it's very helpful to use. And then I just use the white eraser. And I have a kneaded eraser, but I haven't really used it a lot. Um, but I know some graphic artists use them quite a bit. So I'm going to start out with the shape of the upper eyelid. What I'm going to do is start out with this to give me a little bit of where I'm going. So typically I shade the bottom of the nose to give it a little depth and around the flare and then a little bit underneath. Now this is pretty um, dark, so I'm just going to rub my eraser over it for a little bit. And I think what I need to do is get rid of some of this excess ink. basically a back and forth you know you just keep going in and changing it till you get it to where you want it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, you know, the more symmetrical it is, the more pleasing, but it, it doesn't have to be um, absolutely perfect to be pleasing either. I mean, if you look at most people's faces, um, they're not totally symmetrical.
I'm going to end this video here and then I'm going to do the experimenting with the watercolors on part two. So I will put a link to that um, once I upload it. So thank you for watching my video and I hope you enjoyed it and have a very creative and artistic day today. I'll see you soon. Bye now.